The content you're about to enjoy comes from the archives of The Best You. We're devoted to the very best in personal development, with a platform and resources dedicated to inspiring and changing people's lives. At The Best You, we work with the world's leading writers and trainers on the evolution of the self, and people whose journeys have been affected by their work and words. For more information, go to www.thebestyou.co. Rene Piani. Rene is known as the love designer. She helps people just like you draft an action plan to redesign your life and to find the ideal partner, if that's what you're looking for. She defines herself as an architect for love with the tools to help people to achieve their ultimate vision. She's written many books uh, like Get Real About Love and The Secrets to Opening Your Heart and Finding True Love. In 2001, she was one of the pioneers for the non-denominational speed dating company uh, called Rapid Dating. She's appeared on many TV shows. She's hosted many events. Renee is a face. She is the person in LA that you want to connect with if you want to meet the right people, find the right people. She has the most beautiful smile. She has a lovely, bubbly personality. She's obviously from Italian origin. You can see that in her and how feisty and how great she is. I consider her a friend. I've got to know her very well. And I've got to say, Renee is just phenomenal. So um, very passionate about what she does. And obviously a very empowering woman that knows her expertise. So thank you so much. Enjoy. Hi, I'm Bernardo Moya, and welcome. I'm uh, filming live from LA, and uh, today I have the great pleasure of interviewing Renee Piani, who is the love designer, and uh, she's a coach, an author, and a TV and radio personality. Yes, I am. Renee, thank you so much for being here. I'm honored to be here. I've been reading about you. You're one busy man helping everyone in the world, and well, I'm honored to be here. Thank you so much. We're trying. Um, tell me a little bit about yourself. Where were you, brought, where were you born? Uh, what was your early years like? Well, uh, I'm 100% Italian, and I come from a catering restaurant tour family. My father uh, catered to brides and um, started at a very young age. So I was around bringing people together for love and food. And uh, in the hind uh, sights of Leo Buscali, I don't know if you know him as an author, but he was a famous love author. My father used to read oh. us books about love, and well. my parents... We're very passionate people, and we put families and people together to celebrate life. So I grew up that way. And when my friends used to come over, they'd be like, this is how you live? Like, it's like abundance and food and celebration. And, you know, just uh, it was a really one, wonderful way to grow up. Very Italian, very Latin kind of way yeah. of living. Yeah. But when it came to love, when men came there, it was like, you touch my daughter and I'll kill you. <laughs> you know, so it was hard to uh, navigate that. But yeah. my dad teases me, you know, it took you long enough, right? So, yeah. And then I ended up in, the, in that business for a while, which uh, the bridal, you know, getting brides prepared and also the beauty industry and public speaking. Tell me about your early years. What was school like for you? Did you enjoy I, it? I love school. I was sort of the party planner. The nuns used to uh, bring me in and say, there's a shy girl. Could you take her and integrate her into the group? <laughs> and I used to do theater and plays and music and singing and dancing and all that since I was a young girl. So I was always entertaining people and my because my parents were that way. So it, the nuns, um, I was kind of a... A, a rebel in, in school and then I always say if the nuns could see me now you know um, so it's a wonderful thing to be brought up that way but I was kind of a rebel uh, for the Catholic yeah. religion <laughs> because I didn't like all the guilt and uh, the pressure you know yeah. so but I am a spiritual person and um, you know I feel that my work now has been led by the higher powers to help people to have more fun and to open up their hearts to love and community, and that's what's missing here in LA. So, so was there anyone that inspired you in, in in your early years? I would have to say probably my father uh, and my mother, uh, and also I read uh, How to Win Friends and Influence People when yeah. I was a very very young girl, and I really believe that was the beginning of my con learning how to build rapport and connect with people even at a young age. And I just, I recommend that book to everyone. Mm. And uh, I, it. it's a great I book. have, uh, I just, 
you know, have a lot of mentors um, and people that I admire. And Leo Buscalia was one of them. I'm so, if you look him up, mm. he was the first professor to teach love at UCLA. Wow. And he won all sorts of awards and wrote hundreds of books. And then I met him at SAG after for some night he was presenting. And when I saw him, I said, I'm taking over where you left off. And he goes, you do that, girl. And I said, okay. You know, so he was one of my role models as well. And what was your what was your first real job as such? My first real job was in the catering business. I used to help my mother prepare mm-hmm. tea sandwiches and um, you know designing food. So I was into that. And then all of my um, cousins and aunts were all beauticians and you know people in the beauty industry. So I started working for my cousin Madeline and her husband when I was young. I was about fifteen, and I just had a natural knack to take people and reinvent them, you know, even at the salon and mainly talk to them about their problems. And uh, I grew up with my family, my cousins, and we had a a wonderful time. And we used to do fashion shows and um, charity events. And I was doing all the commercials and marketing and media for the salon. We did all these wild uh, promotions and we would dress up in 50s costumes and, you know, all these um, celebrations. And we'd bring we had the coolest salon. It was it was really uh, out there a little bit. It was people used to go, "What are they going to do now?" You know. <laughs> so I that's how I started with marketing and bringing people together. I'm really into putting people together, and I've done it for my whole life. Plus, my dad had three restaurants. Yeah. So if I had a party, I'd say, "Just come to Piani Grill," or "Let's go to the tavern," or the Skagnies, and I could bring people there and just light it up. So coming out. to California and starting that here with nobody here that I can call, hey, dad, can I borrow the restaurant? I became a community connector when I moved here. So, when did you move here? When did you move to I LA? I moved here in 1988. Wow, okay. And cool. I'm not going to, I was 10 years old then. Of course. And, um, and I saw the loneliness because everybody here is in cars. There's not like New York or other bigger cities where you're on, you're on transit and you can run into people every day. So I decided to throw LoveWorks community cocktail parties, and uh, it started sort of a a connecting thing for me. Was that kind of what drove you? Was that what you were interested in? Well, that I did that so that I could meet people that were like-minded to me. So I always believed that wherever I went, I would attract, you know, who I am, and and I did. And um, but I really was into doing television, so I went to the cable networks and started my own love work show, tied it into the events, and then gave away 10% of the money to charities at the time. And I was interviewing people uh, about good news. I got into the good news network. I was the uh, producer uh, with a whole team of doing the good news, the who, what, when, and where, and how to get involved in the city so that you can meet cool people and create community. And uh, we did it for seven years, and then we took it to NBC, and they took the show, but they didn't take me or the people that created it. And it was really sad for me because I was known as the good news girl and also the angel of Los Angeles I was named. I don't know. That wasn't in my bio that I sent to you. (laughs) But Mayor Bradley back in 1990 uh, named me the angel of the city of Los Angeles. Because I'm really into being a messenger and also getting people to wake up and do good so that they can have more fun and make a difference. And um, so I did that and and gave Angel Awards away before Oprah even did um, and acknowledged people for the good that they did so that it would spread people to do more good. Mm. So I've been kind of on the on that trajectory and then just changed paths as I went along. It was fun. I like changing things out and make it fun. So when did you come up with the idea of the love designer? When did you decide to go into running events and, and helping well, people in a more larger scale? Well, actually what happened was I was doing the community events and then I started teaching classes to men with my first book, uh, or actually it was before my book. Back in the 90s, I was teaching men how to understand women And that all tied together with the event. So the men and the women were coming together and and back in. And so I did that for a long time. And I was in TV doing makeovers on men. So I was designing their homes. I was like the Queer Eye for the Straight Guy. And I did pitch the show. And then the Queer Eye for the Straight Guy came out. 
uh, which was great. It started the whole movement, but, and I was doing television a lot from Love Mechanics, the, you know, being a coach for men and, and advising men how to become the prince that all women in the world are looking for. Where is the prince, right? <laughs> so I was the prince trainer, and then I got put in all the CNN and magazines, and this woman came up to me, and she said, I have this idea. Do you want to partner with me and create Rapid, the first speed dating company that isn't in Jewish synagogues? And I was like, well, people think I'm Jewish, I'm, you know. <laughs> Oy vey, no, I'm Italian. I, yeah, let's do it. So uh, we built a website. It was so expensive. You know, it was back in 2000 when, you know, we had to, like, pay out so Spend much money. money. Yeah. And we were the first speed dating company in America. So really, it was rapid dating that got me on the train of speaking everywhere. And we would fly from city to city. We did, like, five major cities. And then we were on NBC and ABC and CNN, and everybody caught the the wave of speed dating. And uh, so we were the first. So I did a lot of the marketing and PR myself. I used to call up and say, "Hey, you got to get these girls on the show." And I'd do all this marketing, and we got we were on all the shows, and it was very exciting. But it took over my whole life. Um, and what I real what the best part of it was was that I got to see the different generations date. 20s, 30s, 40s, and 50s, and up, and how everybody was wired from that time zone that they were born in, and that all people date differently. And then you combine that with all the nationalities that I'm around, it is it led me into my next generation of work because it was like a study of their minds and the way they were wired about love based on their nationalities and where they were from. And that's where I'm headed next. It's pretty cool stuff. And um, but I saw all the the different ways the generations date and the pain that stops some people from finding love. So um, all during that time, I was still designing people's lives. So people always just say, "Well, you're not just a you know rapid dating person. You're a heart healer and help people to look at their life, all aspects, and how it affects each area of your life." And design it the way you want. Not everyone is meant to be married. Not everyone is meant to be uh, parents. You know, so once people examine who they are and do a good look, all based on NLP, from studying NLP for many years with different teachers, and um, so I combined. I was like, how how do I combine my beauty industry, my marketing, my television, and love all in one? And I was meditating. And it was like, you are the love designer. So that's how it came because I, I didn't want to just be a coach because I am a coach, but I'm way beyond that. Mm. So how do you encompass everything that you've done? Like you look back at your history, right? All the mm. things you've done. So I prayed about it and I got the answer. So that's why I am the love designer because I help people to look at their lives where they are now because your love life affects your business. Your love life affects your family. And your love life affects your ability to really put your love and your passion out there when your heart isn't all set straight. Mm. So I have the key, <laughs> and I let people look inside and get them to go deep. If you're interested in working with me, contributing to the magazine, maybe speaking at any of our many events around the world, partnering or licensing The Best You, go to www.thebestyou.co. There's been such a change. I mean, you were talking about generations and how love has changed, mm -hmm. obviously, depending on where you were born and the yeah. community and everything else. But it's changed so much from your parents to, well, my parents and, and yeah. kind of, and then our generation and then kind of like the youth today. No, I mean, it's, I, well, I speak about it at the conferences. Um, I was voted the top, uh, one of the top coaches in the world a few years ago. Um, and, we do these conferences like trying to solve the puzzle of what's next. Everything's mobile to mobile. But the challenge I see now is that the parents, if they're separated, right, you have the stress of divorce on top of the, all the multimedia that the kids are doing. The parents don't even know what the kids are doing because they haven't kept up with it themselves. Because even in business, I don't know about you, but when all the tweeting and this, you know, it's Snapchat one week and now it's Instagram, you know, all the different Zooming, everybody's doing so much technology that a lot of people that are in business, whether love lives are screwed up and then they're in business and they have to deal with all the, all the 
changes in media, it really causes a lot of stress and it causes a lot of um, disconnection between the parents. So there's no role modeling for the younger generation for real relationship at this point, I yeah. don't think. Yeah. So most of, and I have nine nephews, my husband has 12. I come from this huge family and I see that my brothers and sisters, so it depends on how you're bringing up your kids. So the love stuff that's happening in the parent's life, the technology part of it, all combined with the crap that comes out of their mouths as parents about love, they could be completely unwiring their kids from even wanting love. Mm. And that's what I see. I see it everywhere. And so you have the older generation that doesn't know what the hell to do when they get back in the game of love. So those are the people that I help cater to. The 30s, 40s, 50s, divorced, confused, been busy with kids and marriage. Now they're back in the game. They don't really know what to do on how to get back uh, and to make sure they don't screw up their kids. Well, and mm -hmm. screw up their marriage because I and think... Their, well, uh, they already did that. Some of well, no, but I'm saying it on the next the yeah. next time because I think a lot of the times what, what I tend to see is, is that there's very limited patience of, you know... I was talking to someone this morning and, and, and we were talking about you've got to put the work in. Yeah. You know, when it comes down to a relationship, you've got to put work in. And you see couples that get married and then after three, four, five, six years with or without kids, they decide to move on and it's just kind of sad. But in my analysis of the paralysis of this situation, I believe that it's because busy, successful people, many of them that get married, they get married really fast, like a deal. Yeah. And most of my clients are very successful men and women who rush because they're they're like, wow, that's a really handsome man, you know. He fits into my life. They're looking at it like deal, you know, all the deal breakers really fast. And sometimes they get into it without looking at the whole foundation of the marriage. And that's what I what get real about love is is to really take a look at how much of you is really going to go for it. And if you're not all in, you shouldn't do it. And don't do it just to put a Band-Aid on your rushing and needing some sex. And then somebody's beautiful and they cook for you for six months. And then you're like, wow, let's just do this, you know. And you're like, did you ever meet her mom? Did you ever see her psycho girlfriends that are <laughs> all over the Internet with their boobs everywhere? <laughs> and these guys that I that I coach are super hot shots and, you know, they have the cars and uh, and they they keep meeting the same person over and over. So I see that some, you know, look at the movie stars. People follow movie stars. They get married in two weeks. They're having a baby, you know, J-Rod and J-Lo. That's the new thing. Next week, she catch some cheating. It's sad. But it's, to me, when I decided, I didn't get married until my 40s. And, and I, I had barriers because I was too busy. Men did not want to marry me. I, they said, you're so fun and your business is cool. But when it came to them, I had to slow down and really say, wow, I'm going to be here in the moment, not writing my book, not rushing to the next thing, but really being present with someone. Mm. And I realized that I and the people that I coach, they're like, well, I have a home. I have this. I have they have everything, but I don't have that person. And I said, you don't even have time to think about what that person would be like in your life. Do, does somebody really want that life? You know, what is your life? Mm. Can you explain your life? Mm. I can. So when I met my husband, I said, if you don't want to share me with the world to spread love, I would like us to represent love, to be the kind of couple that people would like to follow. And that's what I'm really, that's my next evolution. You know, Get Real About Love is part of the Love Designer brand to then do all the topics about love and marriage is one friendship is one you know we don't even have times for our friends so people that get divorced i think they they're not thinking about they're not looking at the whole foundation as like a building block for your life to look at where a person came from mm. right we were talking about uh, I, I mentioned how important it is to have a support group a coach a mentor someone that helps you because mm -hmm. i know there's a lot of people out there that you know, they're trying to find love, they've got low self-esteem, lack of confidence, and I don't know, they might think it's too late. Well, what's your thoughts on, on seeking help? It's never too late to find answers to things that you ruminate about in your bed. Like if you're in bed at night, I, I have journals of 26 years of my whole career, and I would say, what am I doing? I'm not stopping, and most people 
you need to stop and reflect and have somebody to keep you accountable to do it because when you're in the flow of work, you're not making love a priority. And when you decide to do that and have somebody to watch and to encourage you, because I don't care how rich you are, how successful, or how dynamic, like when you're on the stage and everybody comes over and says, oh, Bernardo, thank you. You know, there's a juice to that, right? Mm-hmm. But how do you take that juice and use that same love that you give to all the people that you help and put it into a marriage? You have to look at how you're treating yourself. And if your mind is whirling that half of you believes in love, and you know with NLP, if you have parts that aren't integrated, you're going to go like this. So you need somebody to like wake you up, right? So that's what I am. I'm like a very direct, I don't. I don't tell, I say to people, when you work with me, you have to be ready to get real because I'm just going to help you see that beautiful heart of yours and unlock who or what in your lineage or in your brain, how it gets wired in our brains. That So I had it. I had my Wonder Woman. That's why I talk about being a Wonder Woman. Most of us have superpowers. Good for us. But I don't care how super powerful we are. At the end of the day, Love became my priority, and then I manifested it. And now that I have it, I've been with my husband 15 years, and he's a superman, and he flies around helping people automating health care. So he was my match. But we carve out sacred moments that are just ours, and it's that's what we're doing tomorrow. We're leaving tomorrow to go on a 12-day vacation to be with our families and fathers and to give love to the people that we honor and respect the most and to be with family. But people don't, aren't, people are going like this and they don't even have time to stop. So yeah. I wake them up. Even if you did nothing else, you should read Get Real About Love because it'll wake you up to the patterns and I call it love loops. Love loops that you keep doing the same thing and you can call somebody, I keep meeting the same person because you're the same person. Mm. I had to stop and look at myself and say, would I want to marry me? Like, would I be the best? wife for somebody right now. And at that moment when I was uh, writing books and doing all the things, it, it wouldn't have been the best time for me to be a wife, but now it is. So, To find out more about our latest projects, get a free coaching lesson or download my book, go to www.bernardo-moya.com. So what would you say your, your best assets are? I think it's my passion and my... Uh, my direct approach to not caring what people think about what I say, but touching the hearts of people. I think that I have the ability to, I was thinking about it today, like, what do I do? I kind of activate you to your already great self that you want to be that's in your journals. Like when people vision, I help them vision. And I I just had a vision board class last week with all these producers, high powered women all in my house. It was amazing. And they all were like, had these big visions and none of them had their pictures on there and none of them had words to describe how they want to felt, how they wanted, how they wanted to feel mm. or be. And many of the pictures were them alone. And I said, your pictures of you are all alone. You're, there's nobody in this life. Like, what are you doing? And, um, when I pictured my life, I love people. I love connecting people. I, that's my other gift is connecting people, not just for love, but for the things they need to find love and to have amazing, an amazing, extraordinary life. So I'm really combining it. It's, it's designing all aspects of your life because they, love is the core for me. You've reinvented yourself several times or, um, yeah, rejiggled your brand. Yeah. And how, how important is learning? Because obviously the whole process of, of what you've done is, is learn and, and just, so how important is learning for you? Very important. I love to work with people people that teach, and I, I'm i working with a, a fantastic spiritual um, therapist, psychotherapist, who's aligned with what I do, but she's more on the holistic end, and I've been wanting to work with somebody always studying about the lineage, DNA. Um, I, I'm, that's my new thing right now is... It's so exciting to learn all about my lineage and, and, and how it affects your relationship. So that's is something that I've been studying for a while. Interesting. And I love studying and constantly studying. And I'm, I study all the, I'm always reading. And mainly now, um, I'm also into rituals, uh, doing a lot of rituals to stay balanced. 
because I, I, no one knows this. I'll be the first time on TV. I uh, had a uh, severe illness I, that ca- was caused from a root canal that they didn't catch, and it spread all the way through my jaw and poisoned my blood, and I got a tumor in my artery that was an aneurysm that could have gone to my heart or my brain. So I went through a, sort of a slow down time, and that's when I realized that I didn't want to be as fast as I was and that I saw the love all around me, and I, when I slowed down, it was like I got put there for a reason, and everybody was spinning around me, and I never saw it that way before until I didn't have time. I didn't have the energy to go out and be what I've always been like, whirling around. And now I'm more like a, I don't know what, what, I, what I would call myself, slowed down version. So I'm, I feel more centered and more aware of what I'm doing than before. Mm. I suppose they call that wisdom as well. Yeah. <laughs> You're a little wiser. Um, a question I'm asking uh, recently to... Um, because I think obviously kind of as we get to the end of our life is any regrets? Yeah. Spending time with the wrong person while you're creating is not a good idea. Um, I did that. I, I had temps. I call them temps in my book and I knew they weren't right. And it's all in my journals. And I had, you know, I was, had my soul part of me going, you know, don't do this. And the other part going, Oh hell, I'm a little lonely. Why not? Right. So yeah. sometimes those people are wonderful and they've become a, a, a key part of my life. But I think that sometimes they took up time and space that I could have been using to create something different at that time. And that's why I, most people get married to those people at that time. I just did not. Um, but I think that I could have had more expansion and more learning. You know, I could have done some other things instead of just getting a fix for my little girl inside of me, you know? Mm. So we all have that little boy and little girl. And, uh, sometimes when you're working so hard, that little girl go, what about me? The man in you, the little boy in you going, God, let me just, I just could use some TLC right now. And you call in the TLC without the other parts, you know? So you have to be careful. I think women sometimes get more attached, you know, when they're with a lover during that time. And I, yeah. and I got attached to people that I knew weren't long, long run soulmates for me or, or work life partners for me. So I didn't have children. Um, but I do have a lot of children in my life and my husband has a son. And, uh, I think I always kind of knew that I would be a stepmother rather than being an actual mother. But I feel, uh, that, You know, now I'm here mothering other people and leading them with love, the same as if it were my children. I I think that the younger generation needs some guidance on how to be an entrepreneur and have a happy marriage. Mm. Talking about entrepreneurship, I mean, nowadays, uh, again, what do you think are the essential assets? Because, I mean, you know, some people may have lost their job in their late 40s, 50s or they're trying to start all over again, or someone has just come out of uni. What do you think the best assets are in order to have or become kind of successful or become a, a good entrepreneur? What do you think the essential assets are? Uh, first of all, you have to really be patient because you're, and you have to have a plan. I, I have actually had maps, you know, vision boards. Really, I had visions of all the things that I've done and what, what I'm doing now. Um, so I think you have to have a vision and a mission. Number one. And then once your mission is clear and people ask you what you're doing, you say, well, I'm creating an online company or I'm, you know, going to be a speaker and an author. And then look and then network and find people that you admire and follow them and ask them for help. You know, I have mentored quite a few people and I think that's going to be, it is a part of my next step to mentor younger people because they always say, how did you create that when there wasn't the internet? The people that are out there now have so many easier roads than people in our age group, I guess you can say, that started things without the ease and grace of the internet mm. and the talent that is out there and the, the less expensive. You can whip something together, but if you don't have the foundation and a team, you have to have a team. And um, I'm creating that whole you know, pre- production team again because I want to do television again. And now I'm just changing it out to have fun, you know, but if it's not fun... Um, if you really don't have a passion for it and you just see people doing it, so you're rushing to do something, really think about what you're doing and vision it out. So that's what I would say. That's great advice. 
So you just said briefly, what does the future hold for you? Well, what's happening, Renee? So many things. Speaking at your conference, I hope. Uh, speaking at big conferences um, and doing uh, one of the things that I see lacking at conferences is networking the people. They'll have an event for networking. But there isn't anybody leading the troops on really actually how to connect with. There's thousands of people at people at these conferences, and I've I've done singles events on. I mean, I, you didn't see the whole big, long thing that I've done. I've been the host of many big festivals, putting people together because you're at this event to meet and there's different rooms and different speakers. So you're usually only connecting with the people in your row or whatever. So I told uh, your friend that I said, I want to do it. It would be really fun to do rapid networking there, which is the other company that I have, uh, other version of it to network people for love, friendship, and business. You never know. At that conference, you can meet the love of your life, the next business partner. These are people that are out there making magic, so why not meet them? But you can't meet them all, but you can meet more than you're meeting. So in the beginning of the conference, I just was at the Conscious Life Expo. We did. Um, they put it at the end, and I said, you should put me at the beginning because people need to meet here because they're in rooms everywhere. So uh, they did it, and then I'm like, oh, we should have put you at the beginning. I said, well... You know, we'll do it next year. So another big conference is just to meet people for one or two minutes. It's either magic or it's not. You say hi, you tell them what you do, and you move on. But I give people directions on how to effectively network and follow up and what to do. And then I make it make it happen in the beginning of a conference. And I want to do that. And I'm also working internationally with um, some big companies and sponsors to do classes uh for younger women and men um, in different countries. That's happening in television again. My own online thing, and I keep getting asked by companies to do their network, and I'm like, I don't know if I want to do your network. I'll do my own, you know. So I'm, I'm gathering a team for that, and um, it's exciting. And to, to be working with amazing people like you, you have a big mission. When I read what you're doing, it's Gail was like, oh, you need to meet him. And I met your team and we took pictures. Mm-hmm. I know I said, hey, if I'm going to maybe speak there, let's get the, the ad up I so that we can talk it. about it. Yeah, yeah. So I pretended like I already was going to be speaking. There. <laughs> <laughs> Looks like you are. Uh, no, great. Well, I'm very, very uh, fascinating and interesting, all the stuff that you're doing and to see how much you've still got planned ahead of you. So many, many, many years from now, what would you like your, your legacy to be? Oh, that I connected people, um, and I when I meet people that I have put together, or helped to stay together, or got back together, uh, like a couple that is getting married this weekend. They they were going to break up, and the girl was all upset, and now they're getting married. So they came uh, to my engagement party and said, "Thank you for making us look at the real, to getting real with each other about our lives and what we wanted, and we decided that we want to do this together." Thanks to you, but they were they were both had fear from being hurt. So that would be one of my biggest gifts is to have thousands of people, couples that are married, single, or, or uh, back in the game, to tell me their stories of how they got real with themselves and found love. Because love stories are what make the world go round, as far as I'm concerned. So I'm going to be creating a lot of love stories, but not only for love, but for business. Because if you don't love the people you work with, then you shouldn't be working with them. Mm. So. When you go to an event like yours, you're going to meet magical people. And I like to be the person. And they come up to me and say, I met Bob because of you. Or I met Bernardo because of you. So, Gail, thank you for introducing me to Bernardo. So that's how it happens. I went to Michelle Patterson's conference. And um, it was it was a really cool conference because Michelle has so much love. But the best part was we... While we're networking, but we, I, my intention, when you go to an event like yours, come with an intention to meet the coolest people and make great contacts. And then I want to have somebody, you say, you were the one that helped me to do that because I would be afraid to walk up. People are afraid, you know, there's Bernardo. Oh my God, I want to go talk to him, but they're so afraid. You know, mm-hmm. don't be afraid to talk to Bernardo. He's so nice. He'll give you kisses on either <laughs> cheek, you know. So flirt with me, teaching people how to connect and make it fun, you know, because yeah. some of these, I did it at one of my husband's healthcare conferences and they were like, we haven't had this much fun. There was like 500 people there. And they, we haven't had this much fun ever. You know, where have you been? So, um, 
like my friend Lynn Rose, who I think is going to be at your conference. Yeah, yeah. She's the rock star of, she's amazing. Um, you know, it's, these conferences are to, to bring us all together and I want to help that and, and do that moral around the world, but also love. I think love is what I'm going to be spread. When people think of me, they'll think, oh my God, she helped me open my heart to love or healed my heart or helped me to see that I'm messing up my children and help to love their children so their children are not going to stop. Well, thank you so much, Renee. Thank and thank you. you so much for... Thank you so much. Thank you. And thank you so much for watching Inspiring People. Thank you. For more information, go to www.thebestyou.co.